Pat Zemer here with MagnaWave with Rosie Sharp Napravnik, one of the most famous female jockeys in the world. She's kind of making a transition now to into thoroughbred replacement or re repurposing. Transitioning. Transitioning, yeah. thank you. Uh, we're at the thoroughbred makeover here in Lexington, Kentucky. It's a beautiful day, second day of the makeover. I just watched your jumping performance, which was incredible. I mean, the horse just looks so good. Tell me what you think. I was really pleased with I'm Already There. He's a five-year-old that has just been very, very impressive, and he had um, an excellent, excellent show jumping and cross country around today. He's just really come a long way and ready to go to the top. There you go, to the top. That, that'd be a good place for him to go. So second day, how do you feel about how things are going? Um, I've, I think everything's going well. He just competed today, and um, we're just waiting for the scores to come in, so we're excited. There you go. So this is your second year at the makeover. What got you, obviously, with the storied career that you've had, and your husband Joe Sharp being one of the better trainers in the business today, that's why you're here. But what drew you really to repurpose the horses? What? Um, I got my first horse in my adult life in 2008. He was a horse that I had ridden in seven races and won twice. Um, his name is Old Ironsides, and I call him Sugar, and he is my heart horse, is what we say. Right. Um, and so I gave him a home when he was ready to retire, and my mother reschooled him for eventing, actually, and I would just kind of come and play whenever I had time, as I was still, you know, full-time jockey. But it was that horse that really showed me how much they are passionate for doing something afterwards, and how much they're capable of. Okay. Um, so, you know, he kind of inspired me. And um, and then, you know, I've had him and I kind of like started to miss eventing and I started to miss, you know, the caring for the horses and developing the horses that I don't really, didn't really get to do much of as a jockey. Right. Um, and I competed a little bit in the last year of my career as a jockey. I competed a little bit in eventing. Um, and so when I retired, I was able to get back into it. And, you know, all I would ever want to do is thoroughbreds. So I'm um, passionate about thoroughbreds and, you know, now becoming very passionate about retraining them. And this is incredible. I mean, there's like four or 5,000 people floating around this venue watching these horses compete. And they're competing in all levels. There's Western, there's training, there's just everything, including what you're doing. Yes, there are 10 different disciplines. And the Retired Racehorse Project, who hosts the makeover, has been an incredible, incredible organization. Their mission is to increase the demand for these thoroughbreds off the track. And it has just absolutely been a phenomenon. And um, I actually sit on the board of Retired Racehorse Project, um, and I am just absolutely floored by what they've done. Um, the makeover, the, the statistics in, in the participants, um, the people, the, the certain professionals that show up with horses here, the people that are buying horses from here, um, you know, they have the entire makeover marketplace. So there are over 200 horses for sale that have already been retrained, and some of them as high as $30,000. Wow. So, and a lot of these horses people are getting for three, um, for free or under $5,000. So, I mean, it's, it's really a great market. Um, we've gotten a lot of people into um, retraining and gotten a lot of people educated in the thoroughbred industry too, um, which is one of the most important things well and that's another one of um, retired racehorse projects big missions is educating. It's got to make you feel good to have a career on the racetrack of course you were doing eventing probably a little bit when you were younger before you got to the track I mean, is that right? I, I grew up eventing and in pony clubs so I went um, I evented up to the training level um, when I was 12 and then I was like all tunnel vision on racing and so just getting back into it. And, and so it's got to feel good you tell me what you think but to to see the, what can happen to these horses off the track. Absolutely, and you know, um, that's I think one of the things that the Retired Racehorse Project has done an excellent job of cluing the sport horse people into what these horses can do. And so now I feel like we need to focus on um, exposing to the racing people what their wow. horses can do. Um, you know, not just, oh, we got the horse at home, look what it's doing, you know, and, and a lot of people are, you know, fifth generation racing people that, you know, just don't have a lot of exposure outside of racing. And there are ten, 10 different disciplines, and these horses are doing barrels, ranch work, competitive trail, freestyle, which you can do anything, there's horses driving, there's horses doing vaulting, um, you know, the regular dressage, show jumping, hunters, eventing, 
Um, there's so many avenues that these horses can, can fulfill after a racing career and they thrive on doing something. Which is why people have become well, so passionate about. It's in their blood. About. I mean, their right. blood is exactly. to is to thrive I and mean, go forward. Yes, they are. They are America's horse. America's horse, thoroughbred makeover, Rosie Sharp depravity. We're going to see her in the winter circle. Count on it. And we're glad to work with her with Magna Wave, and we're glad to be here. Thanks, Rosie. Have a great day. Thank you, Pat.